Hello and welcome in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. A very warm welcome on this, our Pentecost Sunday, as we join together with Christians across the world to celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit poured upon all God's people and available to us all to transform our lives and make us ready to serve Christ in the world. Sam, uh, one of our volunteer Go Brigade leaders is going to lead us now as she shares uh, that story of the very first Pentecost. Hi everyone, I've got a story to share with you today and I thought I'd share one today because on Sunday, it's a special Sunday, it's the church's birthday. We say happy birthday and it's known as Pentecost. So I've got a story all about Pentecost today and it involves some actions just as normal. So what we need to do, we need to start by making a sad face. Sad face. And you have to remember it's a sad face because just before the story, Jesus had left his friends. We're going to have to look up to heaven then there's a lot of wind in this story. So we need to you say whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. You have to do that as loud as you can. And then we need to talk in different languages. Bonjour, hola, merhaba, guten tag. And then you need to do some running. And at the end, we shout hooray. So we're ready for this story. It's called the Holy Spirit comes. Jesus didn't want his friends to feel sad and alone. So after Jesus went to heaven, he sent them the Holy Spirit. His friends were all together when suddenly they heard a rushing of wind. <gasps> Then something that looked like fire rested on each of them. Whoosh, whoosh. And they could speak different languages that they had never heard before. Bonjour, hola, guten tag. Soon other people heard the noise and came running. Peter told them about Jesus and the Holy Spirit and lots of people believed. Hooray! God declares, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Trusting in God's promise of, of his Holy Spirit for us, we turn now to God in prayer to invite the Spirit to come and to fill us as we offer our prayer and our confession to God now. Let us pray together. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in us the fire of your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Gracious and holy God, we confess that we have sinned against you and against our neighbour. Your spirit gives light, but we've preferred darkness. Your spirit gives wisdom, but we've been foolish. Your spirit gives power, but we have trusted in our own strength. For the sake of Jesus Christ, your son, forgive our sins and enable us by your spirit to serve you in joyful obedience to the glory of your name. Amen. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life has set us free from the law of sin and death. Amen. Thanks be to God. And a collect for today. Faithful God, you fulfilled the promise of Easter by sending your Holy Spirit and opening up the way of eternal life to all the human race. Keep us in the unity of your Spirit, that every tongue may tell of your glory. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I'm delighted that the Reverend Stephen Lindridge, our chair of the Newcastle District, has a message for us on this Pentecost Sunday. And we open our ears to God's word as he speaks prophetically through Stephen. Hi and welcome to this Pentecost service, or a service celebrating something around the theme of Pentecost. Being in a crowd is not something that any of us has done for a while now. Whether it was a throng at a football or rugby match, the noise and the hub of the school gate, or jostling through the packed shops before Christmas. My grandma was from Newcastle and worked a few years uh, at Phoenix. And one of my abiding memories of her expressions on her face was when she was telling me about sale day. She hated it. So many people squashed together in a small area, trying to grab a bargain. She said the noise was terrific and you couldn't hear a thing of what people were saying to you. Perhaps we've all been at a party or a gathering where the background noise was so loud that we struggled to hear the person next to us, yelling even in our ear, trying to have a conversation. And it's like that game Chinese Whispers where things get muddled up as one person passes the message to the next person. So doesn't the bride look nice gets changed into does the brine cook rice or something other ridiculous sentence like that. Confusion rarely helps any of us except when it's in a funny situations and some words get muddled up and we can't, we can all have a laugh about it. But when we're looking for clarity, it can be quite frustrating when we seem to have a very mixed or muddled message. Around the end of May or five weeks after Easter is the time of the year that those following Jesus celebrate this thing called Pentecost. The Feast of Weeks is what it means. The doctor and historian Luke writes the ancient text that we have called Acts or Acts of the Apostles. That Jesus told his first followers to wait in Jerusalem until God clothed them with his power. Acts chapter 2 describes this happening to them and it's going to be read for us now. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Christians and Arabs, in our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? Look at what's happening. This event has clearly drawn a lot of attention. But rather than a babbling cacophony of noise in which everyone is confused, there is amazement and perplexity because something is very clearly being heard. All these different nationalities, these different languages and dialects were hearing one and the same thing. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. This power of God clothing these first believers is what Christians call the Holy Spirit. It transformed these people from Galilee so they could communicate God's saving love in Jesus to the whole known world of the time. So this list of places that we've just heard is not a random list of who was there at the time, but it's God's message that good news in Jesus Christ 
is for all the world. A clear, uncomplicated message that God's love is for you. And as we read on, not everyone is convinced. Some say that they have drunk too much wine, but Peter, one of Jesus' friends and first disciples, stands up and he says, they're not drunk, it's only nine in the morning. Don't you remember the ancient texts by the prophet Joel over 600 years ago? This is what God said he would do. He'd pour out his power on everyone so that everyone who calls on the name of Jesus can be saved. Peter goes on to tell them all about Jesus, his amazing life, his death on the cross, and how God raised him to life, freeing him from death so that we may know that freedom in Jesus too. God made that promise not just to those that were listening, but to the next generation and the next generation, and ever since, to right now, to us, listening today. This is for you and all people who God calls to him. Now we could focus on many parts of this amazing account, what was happening in the room, the wind, the fire, but we might miss the overwhelming truth of what happened here and continues to happen still 2,000 years later, the truth of what God is doing today. And that is that God fills and equips ordinary people like you and me to do a task to share his love in ways that people will help to be helped to hear in our time and place and help to hear it clearly. Pentecost is the birth of the church. It's a new era. Something starts and it spreads to each and every part of the world. The message that God loves you and has a purpose for your life. Whenever the church forgets this, and slides back into being religious with none of the power, depending upon ourselves and not trusting or depending on God, then other things take on unintended importance. I was called to serve Christ within the Methodist Church and John Wesley, its founder, and many others of the 18th century, felt God leading them to meet people where they were, outside of the church buildings, to tell them the good news of the power of the Holy Spirit equipped them and a huge transformation took place across the whole country. However, Wesley wrote later, uh, as time passed in his journals, that some places that he visited had stopped keeping the main thing, the main thing of sharing the good news. And it was no surprise that the work of God there had therefore stopped. Sometime in the future, we will start afresh uh, as lockdown eases. But regardless of when that is, my prayer and my question to you is, in what power will you proceed? Are we a church that's looking for God's Holy Spirit to clothe us in our time, to witness to what God wants to do right now in our day? As you read through Acts the rest of, uh, and the rest of Christian history, the Holy Spirit transforms lives down the centuries, setting people free from fears and addictions in all their forms, creating self-giving love that spoke truth to power with humility and gentleness. These Christians, in the power of the Holy Spirit, brought education, healthcare, social welfare, transforming poverty and well-being for countless numbers of people. This same Holy Spirit came upon everyone, young and old, women and men, slaves and free people. Why should you or I be any different? Sharing the good news about God's love is not without risk or cost. So we need help. Are we going to be faithful to God's call upon our lives, to be witnesses to this amazing grace and the love that transforms our lives and changes others? When we start gathering eventually, using some of our buildings again, meeting in purpose, uh, in person, engaging with our communities and the children's work and all manners of mission and worship, yes, it will be a joy and a thrill to not be inhibited, but have we heeded what we've learned in these last few months? Will we have our focus renewed on what is our key purpose as the church? Let's not forget what we've learned from those early disciples that did God's deeds of power and well-being to the wider world and community. 
they set up the first food bank. The least and the greatest shared together and a social holiness spread, nurturing the love of God in a rhythm of mission and worship. The Holy Spirit fills, encourages, equips ordinary people to transform the world with generous, loving justice as we practice our faith through community. This is the kind of place that God could and would add new people, his little ones in faith to. So let us open our hearts and our lives to God's Holy Spirit, depending upon the Spirit to ask the Spirit to lead us and guide us. And to whom is the Spirit calling you and me to witness to this amazing love and to serve within our communities? Pentecost happened so the world might clearly know the love God has for us in Jesus and that love may become to be known and grown and shown through you and me. So let's pray. Lord, fill me afresh today with your Holy Spirit that I may help others to see God's love in Jesus clearly. Amen. The Spirit clothes us for mission. And this week when I was at the food share in Roland Skill, I had a conversation with a couple of our volunteers there who are enabling the church in its mission, providing food for those who would otherwise struggle. And we go over to that interview now and just listen. And I ask you just to think about where you see the Holy Spirit working through the mission of the church. Well, Keith and Leslie, it's uh, good to be with you here at Strathmore Road Methodist Church. And uh, can you just tell me a little bit about what's going on here this morning? Good. Nice job. Um, well, we have been to supermarkets, picked up food, um, and come here, set it all out, as you can see behind us, um, so that we have some kind of order of fruit, mm -hmm. veg, and then we begin packing. And at the moment, we're packing for 34 families, um, plus um, a number of boxes that also go to local schools. And uh, then we have volunteer drivers who turn up and they then deliver those parcels and we do some deliveries too. Our volunteer drivers will normally knock on the door, step back a bit, and then ask how they are, see if they've got any other needs, and have a little, a little chat. And it's, it's good because it's building up links between the church and the wider community. Mm -hmm. and so what would have happened to this food otherwise then? Most of it would have gone to landfill or to um, be incinerated. Mm -hmm. And so that's good for the environment as well as obviously feeding needy families in mm -hmm. Ronskill and Highfield area. Food waste is a huge problem nationally. Mm -hmm. It's wasted right from the farm, the warehousing, the manufacture, the supermarkets and, and in the home. So it's a way of combating food waste. We call it rescued food. Rescue. Well, rescuing it from, <laughs> and rescuing it from it. approximately 300 tonnes rescued um, since they started in 2018. Oh wow, excellent. Yeah. So this is a project that's been going on for some time then, it's been going on for a few years. Yeah. And um, how have you seen that develop in these last 10 weeks with COVID-19? Fabulously, it's yeah. been great. God's timing has been incredible. <laughs> because had we not got things up and running through the drop-in, uh, our outreach for the Syrian families, um, then this would have been so much more difficult to have set up from scratch. So it's just kind of <laughs> slotted in. So you see God's hand oh, in yeah. this as well then? Yeah, yeah, totally. I think the, totally. Way that, the way that the volunteers have come forward the way that people are involved in donating. Just this morning, we're having people arriving donating, people who've been involved with the, the Thursday clapping night are doing street collections of food and they're bringing that here on yeah. Monday. We have done it. We've got a donations box outside. People are uh, donating there. Mm -hmm. And it's seen as, well, how I see it is it's the church working with the community rather than for the community. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're working together. That's yeah. what we've been and doing. Food we can't. Um, distribute goes to um, a pig farm and Excellent. in turn, turn mm -hmm. the um, woman who runs the pig farm, Janet, she supplies sausages to the pickle palace when they are making their meals 
uh, when they do their market. So there's a real sense of interconnectedness, of um, sense of the community and the church as part of the community serving one another and just taking the resources that we do have already in our community and, and yeah. getting them shared around. Yeah. And you're, you're key to that, along with the Pickle Palace, to, yeah. to enable that, those connections. It's another benefit has been the, the really strong partnerships that have been developed through this. So we've now got, we've been a partnership with the Pickle Palace for, throughout, this is a Pickle Palace yeah. project, and um, but we've been looking at with the local councillors, mm -hmm. um, and they've uh, they've been involved in networking with other organisations, the uh, Live at Home Scheme, yeah. as some re refer to people. Yeah. The Poverty and Truth Commission have been referring people. So it's a it's a network of organisations that are working in partnership, rather than the church seeing as having to reinvent itself and do everything itself. It's the church working in partnership with existing organisations yeah. to hopefully add value. And, and, yeah. and, and do you think the church then does add value? to being part of this. Why shouldn't we just say, let the local authority get on and, mm -hmm. and do this? Do you think it's important for the church oh, to be huge. involved? This is where exactly where we should be, uh, where there's need. We have to show that um, as Christians, we're there to love one another. Um, and this is a way of doing exactly that. Yes. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's essential mm -hmm. that we're right in there. You see how I think of the Holy Spirit working as a flow. So we see a flow through a community, uh, right from the people, the, you know, the opportunities to talk, even to the people in the supermarkets who are handing over the donation. It's, yes. it's seeing the church and, and the faith groups as being relevant to the community and part of the community, so we're working together. It's, it's great fun being a link mm -hmm. um, in the chain. It really has. We are reminded that God is always at work. The Holy Spirit is always on the move. With that in mind, before we move on to our prayers, I read a few verses from Psalm 121. And then in our intercessions, there will be moments of quiet for you to offer your own prayers and reflections. Firstly, Psalm 121 and the first four verses. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. Let us pray. O Lord, our God, who never slumbers or sleeps, we give you thanks for your active, dynamic presence in the world, praying that at this time of COVID-19, we would hear and respond to your spirit moving in your world and in our lives. As creation breathes fresher air and birds sing uninterrupted, may your Holy Spirit move us to take better care of creation. As so-called unskilled workers are valued for their help and care, and keep the country fed and moving. May your Holy Spirit prompt governments, society and us to recognise everyone's true value and worth and show that not just by words, but deeds also. As food is delivered, food banks stocked, and the work of Mind Samaritan Shelter and many other charities continue. May your Holy Spirit move us to be generous with what we have.
as people grieve, and others are anxious about the health of loved ones. May your Holy Spirit comfort them and protect those who care for them. As conversations with strangers are struck up on our daily walk, may your Holy Spirit inspire us to deepen and develop this sense of community and friendship for the betterment of us all. As more people turn to you in prayer, God, may your Holy Spirit bring us all into a deeper relationship with you. As hope is ever present through the movement of your spirit, which never slumbers or sleeps, may we entrust all our cares, concerns and joys to you, O God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. We join together in the Lord's Prayer, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you to Janet for uh, leading us in our prayers and for you for sharing with us in these times of worship and joining with the whole church in praying that God's kingdom may indeed come on earth as it is in heaven. Next week we begin our series in Ruth's Gospel as part of our Bible month and each week we'll be looking at a different chapter in Ruth. It will take you about 15 minutes to read the story of Ruth and yes I think there is so much in there that God wants to teach us for our life today. We're going to finish with a prayer and then a blessing. Let us pray. God of power, may the boldness of your spirit transform us. May the gentleness of your spirit lead us. And may the gifts of your spirit equip us to serve and worship you now and always. Amen. And the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you all this day and forevermore. Amen.